Welcome to Wise Beyond Bitcoin, where you come for the crypto neo news, education, and opportunities. My name is Lucas. My name's Ryan. And we have uh, in crypto and blockchain what we feel, I feel it's a cancer thing, but I have a strong feeling that there is a lot more opportunity to come with this specific crypto and blockchain and airdrop. We talk about airdrops. We talk about opportunities. We talk about innovation. Yep. We've got playlists on all this stuff, airdrops, opportunities, tutorials, walking you through staking. We actually have how to get started. If you're brand new to crypto, take your time, do your research. Uh, this is a great time to learn. There's a lot of innovation happening right now. We show you how to get a Web 3.0 wallet, how to send, receive, staking, picking validators, all that good stuff. And we look for innovation all over blockchain and crypto. We have a very macro look. This is not a sponsored or promoted channel. So if you are uh, you love the, two, the, the learning and the education and you'd like to support this university, you know you've got that whale address, that dolphin address. Uh, to throw a little tuna in the below, but either way, uh, the <laughs> not financial is, advice, right? This is not any kind of advice, not financial, commercial, legal advice, medical advice, marital advice. This is entertainment. It's uh, our research. We have uh, a background, a little bit small one in finance and economics is our passion. So we do like to take a macro market uh, approach to look at projects that will be around for some time and what kind of disruption. Yeah efficiency they'll bring what they're doing you know what, what are they gonna um how are they gonna change yeah. the way we communicate or transact value so we're over we talk about different blockchains and different concepts speaking of economic concepts and uh macro picture what's one of yeah them? well we have a couple to talk about but the first one is i think one of the things you look for when you're trying to diversify is to get assets that maybe aren't as correlated altogether Right. So if you're if you're trying to spread out risk, but you're investing in things that all move up and down in unison, then you really are, for all practical purposes, not very diversified. So the risk isn't um, you may, you may yeah, be your diversified risk in, as, in assets, but if they're all kind of going up and going down together, then your risk isn't that right. And yeah, and your cor there's a correlation there. Yeah. So one of the things we look for is which projects are are um, you know doing are doing their own thing as the markets kind of go down together and I think one of them is hex and this has been a really interesting last 30 days there's been a lot of bad news whether it's the war in Ukraine or inflation data or the Fed and their historic uh, half point interest interest rate hike uh, or you know or the monetary policy looking forward promising more whether it's any of those things, we've had a, you know, a cluster of, of uh, oh, negatives. Depending right? when you're watching this video, we have to mention it's, it was just a, a oh, Lunaterra, Lunaterra yeah. UST, right? I was, um, was about to get to that. So yeah, a lot of reasons for um, things to be selling off right now. And in the last 30 days, there's a kind of a standout with hex. They're, they're actually up in the green 9%. And I'm, you know, of course for on the day it's, it's sideways, but in the last 30 days, there's a, a, a nine, roughly 8.9 or 8.5%, um, you know, positive trend here. And that's, that's definitely not correlated with the rest of the market, right? There's right. Some, sort of a, uh, there's, you know, there's a, their own stories playing out. So that's one of, the look for, one of the things to look for beyond, you know, how, how sound is the project itself. But, but if you've established that and you, you know, is it, is it how well correlated is it with everything else? And, Hex, it definitely checks that box. Even it's now, being, even now you bit. see it's it's going against the grain of the market. And we're going to talk about a couple of reasons why. There's many reasons why. Uh, we, we don't know. There's always that omitted variable variance and things that we right. don't get. But uh, some of the things that are influencing it for sure, there's a massive airdrop that's coming forward associated with Hex, the founder of Hex, the Hex community, and, and we've talked a little bit about it, but it's it's Pulse Chain, which is an EVM, Ethereum compatible fork chain. And this is a, a kind of a big deal. You look at other the success of other Ethereum options because of gas fees, EVM chains, you know, whether it's Avalanche or 
Binance, Binance Smart Chain, right. Polygon, Harmony One, Phantom. There are many others that have their own backgrounds and histories, but the idea that um, this potentially could, with the amount of research and time and building that's gone into it, could potentially be one of the most, if not more, efficient and easy to use and develop on right. options. And ready not to, to mention go. opportunities for people, because what this has the potential to be one of the biggest, air, you, you know, one of the biggest airdrops in crypto history. You, You've made that you made that point earlier, and I think it you know it should be reiterated. Uh, we're looking here at the PulseX sacrifice, right? This was the, this is the chain, the exchange rather, that's going to be on uh, on the chain, and almost a billion dollars has been sacrificed already. That's and and uh, this is in crypto, not in the world of traditional finance. It's, it's a blip, you know. There are companies, but in, in the world of blockchain and crypto, and you look at the markets and the exchanges. This for DeFi for block. This is huge. This is uh, definitely. We were just kind of looking, scrolling through to find out earlier. And was it 66, 67, somewhere mm -hmm. in the top? It's definitely the top 100. Here we are, right, right in between there. So, um, and that's just the exchange, right? But this is just the the, the market cap. Um, right now of a billion dollars, but the market cap, I just mean how long, how much was sacrificed to support this new, the Pulse X, the exchange is going to be the Uniswap. It's the exchange right. of Pulse Chain. And there are um, a lot of reasons for the tokenomics behind Pulse X and how deflationary it is. There's a, a lot of thought. It has gone into Pulse Chain and Pulse X. There's a lot of research and information on it. Uh, recommend uh, for learning about blockchain and crypto anyway, if, if education to follow. We'll leave a link for Richard Hart. Richard Hart, when he's the founder, the creator of Hex, and right. have followed, listened to him before he even um, built something on Ethereum, much less created his own. Yeah, he was um, a, for, a Bitcoin. He was a Bitcoin maximalist, but he's. Yeah. I've always been um, an intellectual, open-minded and learning and sharing and teaching others, a great educator in blockchain and crypto. So he does a lot to expose the problems with blockchain and crypto and, and does a great job at that and uh, has a great well, we should, outlook. Why don't we touch on the innovation that Hex uh, has brought? And there's a couple innovations. That's where I is, was going to go with this. Yeah. We've talked okay. about this crypto and blockchain before because we look for innovation and things. There's we look for there's a lot of forks and copies, but but there aren't too many that you look for what's truly decentralized, right? Not just what's a glorified um, a scheme to raise money from people using blockchain by creating tokens like coupons. Right. Bitcoin got its fame and fortune from being something that was immutable and decentralized that people couldn't just uh, inflate, take away and run away with. So right. and, and secure. So to create but, we, but, but there are flaws though, right? With without the mining, the minor centralization and well, there's other, other flaws, other scalability. Bugs, yeah. Sure. But the minor yeah. centralization is a big one, right? Because the, 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 the hash rate, the kind of the computing power that you needed to mine a block has just ex you know, exploded and kind of priced out kind of a, a lot of, you know, just individuals, right, from trying to do, do that. But if, but if you're a, a company or a conglomerate or some kind of, a, if you have deep pockets and you can afford the, the capital, then, right. it, you know, you, then, so then the problem becomes, uh, well, the distribution of those new Bitcoins is not as fair as it could be. And it's going to a, 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 central, a centralized class and then we start getting into the problems of, well, you know, who gets the new money first and how that redistributes right. wealth and the inequality that comes from that. And so, yeah, setting up the stage for what Hex does different. I'm going to summarize what you just said before you move on to uh, the, the, our, the time value fund. But the idea is that Bitcoin's proof of work, which requires computer miners. So the people who get to get the gold first, get the money first, are those who have the most access to computer hardware and cheap energy. And that could be through subsidizations, it could be through, um, but having the resources. Where in Ethereum right. is the same way itself until it moves to proof of stake. But even then you've got the need for 
32, 33 ETH. So it's still, there's a centralization right. for, for validators, but HEX is built by a smart contract that operates not rewarding the miners, not rewarding stakers on the proof of stake chain, but there's a different kind of staking because it does reward stakers through the smart contract and it does it in an innovative way. And that's why we say innovative because if you look everywhere else in crypto, it's secured by and in, in, um, it kind of rewards the, that new inflation. Everything has a new inflation. A new inflation comes mm -hmm. out, whether it's people are mining gold, people are printing money. Bitcoin has an inflation rate. It's just whether or not the inflation rate is higher than the uh, the growth of, uh, well, the, the demand for it, right? Sorry, the demand. Yeah. So in, in this sense, the inflation rate, Bitcoin, you're saying comes from computers and miners and rewards resources, other rewards, wealth and resources, if it requires a, an abundance of an amount of a token. But right. Hex is designed to treat people equally um, as a as a money as a base, and how does it do that? Well, it, it rewards uh, it pays. Well, you stake right. You you bond your your uh, your your hex up for a time period, and then depending on how long you you choose your stakes, right? There's a a variable rate of return, right? That goes you know the longer the longer you commit it, the the greater you're rewarded, right? So it rewards people for for their uh, time the time value of their bonding. So really, and that's very we like to make the point that that's very harmonious with just the natural way that people respond to time in, in the financial context, right? And it's it's very it's it's a well-known thing that a dollar today is worth more than a dollar in a year from now, right? That future, that future stream of revenue or that future promise of payment has to be discounted through time. And that's you know using interest rates and you get, you know, you can so you basically get this understanding it's embedded in interest rates it's embedded in prices it's embedded in people's psychology and rationality that some they prefer something today versus a promise in in the future so this time value mechanism is natural and to be able to develop a, a way of distributing money that respects it and honors it and embeds that that concept it, it definitely creates a a an, an incentive to be more future oriented right so the more you get paid to save the more you get paid to wait the more you will and that's and that's good for the for the protocol it's good for the va future value of that of that money or of that or whatever that asset is so um Here it is. and the best part about it is is that it doesn't it doesn't create inequality it doesn't it doesn't create a pathway to inequality it um it and does the opposite it, it kind of uh it, it creates an egalitarian um distribution of wealth and something else to, to mention in a world where um, we didn't mention this, but by the, as we're making this video, Luna Terra just happened. And there have been uh, many other um, algorithmic stable coin, cryptocurrency experiments, applications built on blockchains, rug pulls, just poorly designed mechanics and projects that yes. um, are open-ended with roadmaps. And Hex has been around for a couple of years. It's been audited many times. It is a um, closed, complete pr project. There is no DAO governance voting to change it. It has 100% uptime. It is easy to understand. And it's something that you don't have to worry about. Um, you don't have to worry about someone just taking all the, all, all, all the hex, you know, the liquidity off the uh, Uniswap exchange. That's, um, well, there's the OA address, I, I suppose that in, in theory, um, it has been could, brought up. Could do that, yeah. Yeah, uh, however, based upon prior activity and based upon Everything else, do your own research is not financial advice, but from from um, experience and from what has been seen and the direction and what's being built, it appears that the um, OA address is one to promote the growth and the value and the long-term success of the project. And um, 
that's that. But people yeah. have people have gotten behind other projects that um, ha have their own elements of risk. There's an element of risk to everything and anything in life. So that's why I do your own yes. research and um, don't put only all... only invest what you're willing to lose. Right? <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, but that being said, when you when you look at the mechanics of how it functions and the community and uh, for yep. like we mentioned the time value currency, I think that there are many benefits and reasons to join. Now let's talk about let's talk about the airdrop opportunity on Pulse Chain because that might be something that will be interesting for our viewers to hear about what what's involved with that. So we're talking about a, a new blockchain, right? And how how do new blockchains typically uh, launch well usually with an airdrop and mm -hmm. and that's what's going on here and the one of the big details is is that you will get a copy of every one of your erc 20s right in on pulse chain so if you have of course ethereum uh if you have sand if you have uh, fill in the blank right all the erc 20s that you could possibly have they will be f basically forked and airdropped onto pulse chain so that's you know, depending on how much of an of, of a position you have, that that could be you know the biggest airdrop you we ever receive, right? And we don't know the value. Absolutely, we don't know the value of what Pulse Sand, P Sand, P Link. Uh, what we do know is that the market will determine. And in the past, um, air, rel, you know, many airdrops. Uh, there's different ones too. You know, you may find some of these ERC. 20 tokens do decide to move a lot of their community development and some don't. So some yeah. may will get more value than others, depending upon the reception that those communities um, give it. However, what we do know is that layer twos and other EVMs exist because developing on Ethereum is too expensive and is not practical right. for the application. So to have a highly functioning, highly efficient, ready, plugged in, ready to go, chain that already has already has tokens yeah, these, for your community if you so choose to port over and continue developing i think it's a lot of the groundwork is already done right it's already a lot of the groundwork's already done and you know we'll, we'll we'll find out but you also look at the billion dollars almost saved up for the exchange already locked up and the and one of the more um, thriving and successful communities in blockchain in crypto over the last couple of years. Absolutely. So, um, you know, I would say if you following blockchain, there are two things. And this is not financial advice at all. Nothing in, in this world is financial advice. But if you find something that's not correlated with the rest of the market, right? Um, and scalability and low gas fees and a in an important a you know a vibrant community with a you know with a visionary oh uh, this was a and it yeah, keeps winning it hits a lot of it keeps winning uh, if you're into sports you're like really into your sports team and you may not like the championship team because they win all the time and it's not from your city or your state and so you don't but this isn't sports this is a, no time to uh get tribal we're look for innovation look for success look for what works and, and be humble and um, say, uh, well, maybe even for reasons I don't understand and I'd like to understand, as is with many opportunities in blockchain. There are so many right. that I research. I'm like, well, from what I understand, I like what this is vibing, it, but knowing that there's a lot I don't understand uh, with, with everything. Yep. And there's an That's element, the way to go into it. different elements of risk. So that being said, why would you not bet on something that continues to win? And I don't mean bet, I'm not betting gambling, but if you're going to put your energy into something and, and being a part of its success and growth and wanting to learn about the, these new technologies, if something is the most, the best performing in all of blockchain. Which, which growth, X is one of the best performing assets. In the last right? two, and since, since its inception, if you look at it from beginning to end, you can find different periods like you can with anything, but overall, I mean, it's just been um, no, no, no question. Now, why would you not want to be a part of that? And I'll say something else about it. We're on a less popular market cap site, nomics.com. And you can see X being 
report. It's on a couple other sites, but the most popular uh, market cap sites because they're owned and run by people who pay for their advertisements for whatever gatekeeping, every thing has its ups and downs and for their gatekeeping reasons. But if you were to go to coin market cap, which it's most people do, find hex. which most people do if they have it on their phone or they first get into crypto from right. the, 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 whatever app AP is plugged into usually comes from this or coin gecko. Look, you don't see hex is disappeared. It's not, it's not anywhere in here. Um, in right. fact, they, I believe they you have search it. for it. Yeah. I believe they have it around 200, 201. I think that's where it's at now, but um, here we go. Let's scroll down. The idea is that why all these other junk, projects and i'm, I'm not going to call all of it junk but probably most of it i would say is junk and you won't find around and um let's see in a few years there it right. is 201 yeah. on the third page 201 right top of the third page so it's just interesting and hey you know what great but if it's it's still little understood little appreciated and and i'll say this Actually, I'll say a couple more things because I've been wanting to say a couple more things. Post-regulation, we haven't talked about regulation. We're moving, institutions are adopting, people are looking to understand uh, rug pulls, cryptos, are they um, securities, are they not securities? One of the you know, guidelines to measure measuring is going to be is it decentralized? And a lot of projects aren't decentralized and, and have uh, different mechanics that are more like investing in a company, so to speak. When you look yeah. at the time value currency mechanism of locking up, when you look at the fact that um, it is run by code, there isn't a team, it is fixed, it's, it is decentralized. And anyone who has uh, access to a wallet has equal access and opportunity to um, that inflation, you, you are looking something that passes muster and it's probably, you, there might be a, there are a couple others, but not many beyond the old school Litecoin, Bitcoin, and these right. proof of work um, secure uh, chain. So in a, I can see some, some reprieve when a lot of others get washed away as being seen as, um, you know, just, investment, you know, companies right. and, and securities, I could see this is elevating even more being recognized in, in that context, right? In that context, you have that. And you also have, I want to, before we uh, um, move out into the, and another shout out to Richard Hart for mentioning this in his tweets, which we don't do technical analysis and we like to talk about fundamentals, but when looking at a chart, um, it is absolutely important to move to the logarithmic um, perspective to have a better understanding of the. Um, the yeah, it gives you a better view. Volatility in time. But I, I wanted to mention why Hex does not appear to move with the rest of the market. This is a, a theory and understanding of perspective of mine. And it comes to. Most of, I've mentioned this, I'll mention it again, why I think that crypto has quite some correcting to do, um, possibly some still time with the rest of the traditional market. But we know that BlackRock, we know that Citadel, we know that MicroStrategy, we know that Kathy Wood are, we know that El Salvador now has adopted Bitcoin. The reality is that there's a lot of institutional money that's in blockchain and crypto, a lot of it. And you go to Coinbase and Gemini and, and other intermediaries, and they have access for their clients, customers to be able to invest and speculate and purchase these through their brokerage systems. So there's a lot of the money that we see in blockchain and crypto is institutional. And I'll continue to say that I think it, there's a lot more institutional money than there is people flipping open their cell phones and their laptops and, uh, you know, opening up an account and getting a few hundred dollars or a few thousand dollars. I think that um, there's definitely bigger players pushing the prices. However, however, 
and, and all of these um, chains that have venture capitalist VCs and, and large institutional players, Hex from its origin and um, to, to date does not have that influence and is kind of pre big money, which is something you don't see in pretty much the rest of blockchain and crypto, which is why another reason why I think it has that rare ability. I think that's one of the reasons why we see it not correlated and we see so much correlation amongst all these others, why they all tend to rise and fall together. Um, that's that's another perspective. Yeah, get that, that makes sense. I think that is the main points. We want to share opportunities. It's the major airdrop and long-term macro perspective. <clears throat> if you're looking at uh, diversification and learning at different kinds of projects, there's proof of stake, there's proof of work, there are cryptocurrencies that are behind projects that are developing new applications to come. There are some that are complete and functioning already and um, right. new chains being built. So this- Lots of new stuff. Lots of new stuff. And you know where to go when you want to learn about it. One of the many resources, subscribe, notification bell, whales, you know what to do. Below there's that, uh, there's that little tuna plankton, krill address you can drop a little bit over here whatever it is and what else we pretty much covered all we've covered I think that's it in, in front of pulse. in front of us is it not already kind of decoupling with the market look already you know you see it now even still so a couple others too we'll see what's going on always interesting things happening 24 7 and we will Get it out to you every once every seven days, once every seven days or 24 days. I don't know. We'll reverse that somehow. But until the next time, have a beautiful day. Namaste, y'all. Thank you.